Okay, so we are now recorded for this workshop. So thank you very much for joining to this online workshop, uh, gathering Japanese and EU people. We are really happy to welcome you here. And thank you very much to all the speakers. So today, uh, Richard Kamenji will open the call. We will have three technical talks, a virtual group photo as usual, and the conclusion and close by Yag Masatoshi Yagi. So, Richard, if you want to start the opening, please go ahead. Thank you very much, France. <clears throat> good morning to everyone. Good afternoon to Japan. It really is a pleasure to meet again here on this platform uh, to discuss issues that are pertinent to what we do together here. What we do is essentially trying to find technical solutions for making use of architectures that are provided on the market in terms of HPC. Uh, sharing expertise and experience in using these architectures between Japan and EU. And uh, the workshop really is to focus on the architecture that is you know, known as GPU. Uh, I think it's familiar to everyone here around the table. And we have been starting this uh, simply because the market, as you all know, is moving, evolving towards uh, some solutions uh, to which we have to adapt. So this is a realization that we made in particular in the EU, uh, that resources that will be available in the future will have a significant component. We have to have a significant component of GPU because that's market driven. This is not our choice, it's the market dictating which way to go. And if we want to be able to make use of computing resources in the future, we better be in a position uh, to know how we can adapt our codes to these architectures. As you know, uh, we have indigenous codes, which means that they are written by the community, for the community. They are not off the shelf solution, and there will be nobody there to help us, you know, moving these codes into different architectures if we don't do that by ourselves. This is the situation we are in. And within the EU, we have a significant effort to uh, advance on this front. And with our Japanese colleagues here on the table, we try to share whatever we gain as experience expertise. You know that on the uh, HPC platform we have in the EU, in uh, Bologna, uh, we have a fraction of GPU there, uh, which was put in place purposely to make sure that we can start making use of this architecture. And currently in the EU, we are thinking of next steps beyond what we call Marconi Fusion today and what our experts have in a way understood is that there will be a significant fraction of more GPU in the solution that we'll be providing in the immediate future. And therefore, this <coughs> workshop is really well-purposed. And as Franz said, we have a number of speakers. These are people who have been using the GPU architecture we have in the uh, EU. So this is NVIDIA, as you all probably know, uh, to a very large degree, and they are happy uh, to share their experience with us today. So thank you very much for doing that. Thank you very much for contributing to this effort. And we look forward to hearing what you have been able to do and how in particular, that's the key question to us, how you have been able to do that and how, uh, say, um, in terms of, um, I would like to say future perspectives, how do we understand the ability of the community to keep making use of, of this kind of, uh, architecture. So the sustainability of the effort is, is the question at hand here. So if anybody can contribute through their presentations to share uh, some light onto this, it will be very much appreciated. With that, I will say again, Franz, thank you very much for organizing this. This is a very good activity, I will say, and uh, we uh, appreciate the effort that has been put into this and thank you everybody around the table for attending and contributing to this joint effort that is, I have to say this within the context of the uh, broader approach agreements with Japan, between EU and Japan, and in particular within what we call IFERC, uh, CSC, 
and uh, I think we don't need to dwell on that. Most people know. So now I think we need to open the floor for our speakers to share with us their insight and their results in particular. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Richard. And again, I join Richard to thank you all of you for being here. Uh, so the first talk is uh, Imadera San from Kyoto University. So normally you can share your screen. And you're muted, Imadera San. Okay, yeah. everything is okay. Perfect, thank you. Okay, so I'm Kenji Imadera in Kyoto University, Japan. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to present our research at this workshop. In our talk, after the brief introduction, I would like to report two achievements which reduce the computational cost. One is the implementation of field aligned coordinate, and the other is the GPU acceleration, which is the scope of this workshop. Then let me report the statistical analysis based on neural network model also, its GPU acceleration has been now going, uh, is now going on. Okay, so first of all, let me discuss the uh, uh, basic background. Gyrokinetic simulation is considered to be an essential tool to study ion and electron scale turbulence. In the past, each scale was individually investigated by assuming the scale separation between device size, ion size, and the electron size because there exists a few other gaps. But recently, owing to the rapid progress of high performance computing, much scale simulation becomes accessible, and our purpose is to do direct multi scale simulation for device size scale profile variation and ion scale turbulence to clarify their hierarchical interactions. To achieve such much scale simulation, we have employed the global full F model. Gyrogenetic simulation is roughly categorized into two approaches. One is delta F local approach in which the evolution of the perturbed distribution function is traced while the background profile are assumed to be uniform in space and constant in time for simplicity. Since this scale separation enables us to do direct numerical simulations with relatively low computational resources, it is often applied to the experimental data analysis in addition to the much scale simulation for ion and electron scale tablets. On the other hand, in full F global approaches, both delta F and its equilibrium part are solved self consistently under the power balance between external heat source and sink, which is called as a flux driven simulation. It enables us to do much scale simulation for background profile variation and ion scale turbulence, as was mentioned on the last page. We can also trace the global profile formation coupled with mean ER, which can be linked to the transport barrier formation. And uh, the other advantage is that uh, both neoclassical and turbulent transport process can be traced self consistently, showing much physics nature. Taking such advantages into account, we have developed full F gyrokinetic code named GKNet. In original GKNet, employed equation system consists of gyrokinetic plus equation for full F ion distribution function and gyrokinetic flash neutrality condition with adiabatic electron. Recently, we have extended it to three directions. One is the rectangular coordinate one, which enables us to treat various kinds of magnetic shape by introducing numerical MHD equilibria. Another is electromagnetic version with kinetic electron, which has been already applied to invest, investigate the electromagnetic turbulence, such as kinetic ballooning mode and toroidal alpha and eigen mode. On the other hand, in the electrostatic simulation with kinetic electron, so-called omega H mode appears, 
which severely limits the CFL condition. To avoid this problem, we have introduced the hybrid electron model. These two figures show the animation of 3D electrostatic potential in addition to the single trapped ion and single uh, trapped electron motion obtained by GKNET HE. Uh, we can see uh, that the dynamics of turbulence in full torus is well captured, uh, not on, uh, by taking not only slow scale ion, but also uh, fast scale electron dynamics into account. However, the numerical cost uh, becomes huge because kinetic electron dynamics can make the CFL condition severe, even if we use a hybrid electron model. Uh, which is roughly proportional to the square root of mass ratio. In order to reduce uh, the number of simulation grid and resultant calculation time, uh, in this study, we implemented the field aligned coordinate, uh, which is given by the geometrical uh, toroidal angle and the straight field line toroidal angle given by theta star. And Jesa uh, is a GPU acceleration uh, by OpenACC, which is one scope of this workshop. As you know, OpenACC is a kind of simple directive to utilize GPU parallelization in the heterogeneous CPU GPU system, which is similar to OpenMP for CPU parallelization. In this study, uh, we verified how the simulation with the field aligned coordinate can be accelerated by using the open ACC directives on Marconi 100. Then uh, we evaluated the globality of heat transport from obtained 1D data uh, from, uh, in the GKNet simulations. And uh, to, we focus on the relationship between temperature and heat flux by utilizing the neural network model. As you know, so neural network uh, can be accelerated uh, by GPU too, but uh, now uh, our acceleration is still not going on. So that uh, as a topic C, uh, let me just mention the evaluation of the globality by, by using the uh, neural network model. Uh, today, I would like to focus on these one, two, three topics. Okay, so then let me move to the first topics. Generally, the circular concentric magnetic field in toroidal coordinate system is given by this form. However, uh, Q bar usually does not correspond to the safety factor in global system when it is integrated along the geometrical toroidal angle theta. So we consider the so-called straight field line polar angle theta star given by this formula. In this case, uh, Q satisfies the definition of safety factor, which has the advantage to reproduce the borrowing type structures of microscale uh, micro instabilities. Then uh, we perform the transformation to field aligned coordinate given by this relationship. As a result, the magnetic field field has only Z component in the covariant basis, which demonstrates that it is E follows the magnetic field line as was discussed on the last page. In fact, the gyrokinetic equation of motion in the field aligned coordinate, which is derived from the gyrokinetic fundamental one form, uh, consists of these four equations. We can see that the advection term along the magnetic field line appears only dz dt. As a result, the mode has a long wavelength along the z direction so that the required grid number is expected to be smaller. On the other hand, the gyrokinetic quash neutrality condition uh, becomes complicated and uh, is symbolically given by this form. L0 is a differential operator for x and y, uh, and while L1 is for z. Uh, since the wavelength is long along the z direction, 
uh, L1 becomes the higher order. <coughs> and considering such a uh, ordering uh, to numerically solve this equation, uh, first we do the FFT along the y direction because all the coefficient is independent to y. Then by setting the initial guess phi zero and applying the non diagonal part of the higher order L1 operator uh, to phi one like that, uh, like, like that, uh, we can get the, uh, just one D equation for X so that we can simply solve this one, for example, by utilizing the LU decomposition. Then uh, by substitute, substituting the phi one as a new phi zero, uh, we can get the converged solution iteratively. This method is the same as the simple Yakov method, but a few iterations are usually enough for the convergence because uh, partial phi partial z is a higher order. So that uh, this one considered to be higher, uh, which means, which implies that the non diagonal part is uh, very uh, one order small. Uh, from this page, I would like to report the linear benchmark result in the case with the cyclone best case parameters. The left bottom figure shows the dispersion relation of toroidal ITG mode obtained by the toroidal and field aligned GK net. While the DR frequency coincides with each other, the growth rate has a slight gap in the high wave number regime. This may be related to the fact that uh, basic equation system has uh, uh, basic equation system use uh, approximation for nabla purple in the toroidal case so that the field aligned case can get more accurate solutions. And from the upper two figures, both versions seem to get same toroidal eigenfunction with n equal 20. And the corresponding colloidal harmonics shows the radial position. Uh, sorry, this one. Colloidal harmonics shows that the radial position of local eigenfunction satisfies the resonance condition, uh, so that it is natural to conclude that the field aligned version can precisely uh, solve the ITG instability. And uh, these two figures, the uh, impact of the grid number along the toroidal direction uh, in the toroidal version, namely NZ, and uh, to Z direction in the field aligned one. And the other parameters are fixed as follows in both cases. In the toroidal version, 124 mesh numbers is required for the convergence but it, it is drastically reduced to 16 by using the field aligned version, so that in the standard magnetic shear case, the field aligned version can much improve the computational cost. And this figure shows the resultant computational time to calculate each part. Uh, field part is a part to calculate the gyrokinetic cross neutrality condition, and the boundary condition is set. Uh, and the boundary condition is set at this bound part. When we use the converged grid number in each case, we can see that computational cost of both glass of and field part becomes roughly one order smaller by introducing the field aligned coordinate. And the ratio of total computational time is also uh, 0 0.11 in 256 square case on JQRS1 and uh, uh, 0 0.15 in uh, 1024 quartz case. However, the cost of, uh, and the scaling of bound part in the field aligned version is not so good because of 1D FFT to calculate the twisted boundary condition. So we plan to improve this bottleneck by optimizing the MPI demo, uh, domain decomposition, but still under development. Uh, this is the uh, achievement of the field, uh, introduction of field aligned coordinate. Then I will discuss its GPU acceleration. The alternative approach for the acceler acceleration is GPU parallelization. In this study, we introduced the uh, open ACC directives and verified its efficiency on Markov 100 
through the Japan EU collaboration framework for fusion energy. As you know, so each node, uh, each node on Marconi consists of two IBM Power 9 with 60, 16 cores and four NVIDIA Volta V100. And the memory bandwidth between CPU and CPU uh, is uh, 64 gigabyte per sec, while that between CPU, GPU, uh, CPU, GPU, and GPU, GPU is uh, 150 gigabyte per sec by NVIDIA 2. I would like to briefly explain how the OpenACC directives are specifically installed to the field aligned version of GKNet. The most heavy part in GKNet is a fab, uh, is a 5D, 5D loop uh, to time integrate the distribution function shown in the REC program. We combined these loops to one by using the ACC loop collapse directive and then distributed heavy calculation to each CPU, each GPU. And in order to use uh, uh, multiple GPUs on one node, uh, we use uh, ACC set device number uh, subroutine to explicitly link the, uh, each GPU to each CPU like that, uh, which technique is available in the MPI OpenACC hybrid parallelization. And, uh, for G CPU GPU data transfer, uh, so called uh, the open ACC data directives, such as copy, copying, and uh, update, and so on, are utilized. From the viewpoint of the memory bandwidth, uh, the direct transfer between GPU GPU is more favorable, so that we are considering the direct data transfer by using the CUDA Aware MPI and the ACC host data. But, uh, uh, it is still now going on, so that uh, in this presentation, uh, let me report uh, the case. Let, let me report the case uh, with the CPU GPU uh, the data transfer case only. And uh, on the other hand, uh, cohesion part is also a heavy part uh, in the uh, in GKNet. And uh, cohesion part consists of the uh, relatively uh, to light but similar 5D loops and uh, MPI all deduced communications. Here, uh, by utilizing the fact that uh, moment local is independent to the other moment local, uh, uh, sorry, moment local zero is independent to the moment local moment local one and two, uh, the asynchronous uh, execution is utilized to, to hide the cal calculation and the communication. More specifically speaking, when a GPU uh, finishes uh, this first loop, first 5D loop, it can go to the next execution without waiting for the, uh, for the other GPUs. And then uh, we set the ACC weight uh, just before the uh, to MPI or deduce calculation and communications. Such a same technique is also applied to the boundary part uh, for hitting the bat facet and the communication. And we confirm that uh, uh, such an execution efficiently works uh, for the GPU acceleration in both parts. And the resultant computational time uh, summarized on this page. Uh, by utilizing the one GPU on each one node, the browser part is accelerated by 21 times, and the total accelerated rate is roughly 13 times, as is shown in this figure. In addition, by using the four GPUs on each one node, which is the maximum number in Marconi 100, the total accelerated rate becomes roughly 44 times, which rate is found to be almost proportional to the number of GPU. So we can also conclude that the GPU acceleration efficiently works for the speed up of the simulation with the field aligned coordinate. 
However, the remained problem is the FFT part, uh, which is the main reason why the cost and the scaling of, of the bound part is still low. Uh, we consider some ways to resolve it, but uh, QFFT is uh, not so efficient way in my case, so that uh, I'm still uh, the considering just an alternative way. Uh, this is a report of the GPU acceleration. Then uh, let me move to the final topic. Uh, Generally speaking, in flux driven simulation based on full F gyrokinetic model, we often observe global tur turbulent transport, such as avalanche like uh, transport and uh, the varsity phenomena uh, coupled with the background profile variation. And uh, our GKNet simulations also ident identified that radially extended structure emerges. Uh, which triggers the uh, vasty like uh, very large heat transport. Uh, this raises the question uh, that uh, uh, transport is determined by uh, locally or globally uh, because uh, such a uh, structure uh, ranges uh, with uh, roughly 10, 20 or 30 lower. One pioneer work uh, for this study is the evaluation of the kernel of turbulent heat transport coefficient based on the GSERA full F gyrokinetic simulation result uh, in CEA. And uh, once we assume the globality of heat transport, the heat flux is given by not such a local form, but such a global form. And then by utilizing the Fourier transformation uh, because of the convolution relationship, uh, we can get this form. And then they indirectly calculate the typical scale length of this kernel uh, as roughly from 10 to 20 rho i, which is longer than the correlation length of turbulence given by three or four rho i. So that uh, this result implies uh, uh, the globality is important uh, to evaluate uh, such a heat, tra heat transport. And uh, uh, in this work, uh, by setting the temperature uh, gradient at each radial point, for example, uh, 64 or so on radial point, uh, as a uh, uh, explanatory uh, variables and heat and one heat flux as a response variable, we have developed uh, such a neural network model. The developed model gives a functional relationship between heat flux and the temperature gradient at each radial position, uh, which corresponds to the uh, virtual uh, global transport model in real space. Based on this model, we directly evaluate the typical scale length of the heat transport uh, uh, port. Uh, also, GPU is not utilized now. However, uh, the temperature gradient, uh, the temperature gradient at each radial position has a strong correlation with each other. Uh, it is usually difficult uh, to extract the linear relationship between each uh, temperature gradient and heat flux, sorry, uh, like this formula, uh, so that it is very difficult to detect uh, this coefficient. To resolve this problem, we have introduced the so local, uh, so called accumulation local effect. Uh, this figure shows uh, one example of ALE. When X1 and X2 has a strong correlation shown as fig one, uh, fig one, the gradient of the uh, function F uh, for X1 becomes 10 because X1 and X2 has a strong correlation so that uh, gradient becomes three plus seven equal 10. But by using the ALE, also, the detail, details is skipped here. Uh, we can extract each coefficient, namely seven for X1 
、あ、sorry、three for x1 and seven for x2 are independently so that it is expected to that I expected that we can extract the weighted coefficient of t o l e r a n c e spot kernel given by this form. By then,、uh, by applying the ALE to our global neural network model, we directly calculated the heat transport kernel for QI at the half minor radius.、Uh, these two figures show the radial profile of neoclassical and turbulent heat transport kernel, respectively. We can see that、uh, neoclassical heat transport kernel becomes delta function like、uh, showing local nature. Because once、uh, we insert the delta function to the, this model, we can get the local relationship between heat flux and temperature. On the other hand,、uh, we, turbulent transport kernel s h o w、uh, no clear correlation anymore,、mm -hmm. uh, which implies that、uh, there is no relationship between the temperature gradient and、uh, the heat flux. Then we recalculated the heat transport kernel by considering a finite time delay、uh, like this model,、uh, so that、uh, time is a little bit delayed. And first, we investigated the appropriate time delay by ALE and found that the temperature gradient and the turbulent transport have a strong correlation in the case with tau equal、uh, two times R0 over b u l l s h a m m e r Which is considered to be a response time of turbulence on evolved background profile. And then、uh, we recalculated the transport, turbulent transport kernel、uh, with a finite time delay. And then we can get uh, such a uh, radial profile.、Uh, we can see that、uh, kernel becomes, shows、uh, a relatively local nature, but、uh, And、its typical scale length is relatively larger than neoclassical, so that、uh, this result indicates the importance of time delay and global effect in high,、uh, for example, in high input power case, because in high input power case,、uh, this one becomes,、uh, is considered to be more、uh, wider. And then let me move to the summary.、Uh, Uh, by utilizing the、uh, OpenACC directives, the calculation speed to time integral to the distribution function is accelerated by 44 times, shown in this figure. And then、uh, we also implemented the feed aligned coordinate and、uh, uh, such a、uh, statistical analysis. And the、uh, uh, remaining problem related to the GPU acceleration is、uh, how to do the de direct data transfer between GPU and GPU that I'm considering such a ways. And the other problem is、uh, how to accelerate the Python program for neural network model. And、uh, now our accelerated rate is still low. So I'm considering what is the key parameter and、uh, how to accelerate the path code to. Anyway, so thank you for your attention and thank you for utilizing the Marco 100 for this study. That's all. Thank you very much, Madera san. So I see a question from Simpa in the chat. Simpa, do you want to unmute? Simpa, I don't see you. サポート Uh, to, uh, well, in my understanding, this means that my code is fully open ACC parallelized or not. No,、And、I mean,、uh, Imadera san, I think I, GPU, you use a GPU on Marconi, right? Yes. In that case, PGI hot run. You, you, you use a PGI hot run, I, I think. 
Okay, so, so, so question, question, qu huh? uh, question is uh, PJ Hotran fully support the open SEC? Mm. Eh, fully support. At least we can get the mm. uh, same result, even if uh, we use the open ACC and PGI Fortran. Mm. So that open ACC works well in my study. But, but sorry, fully supported one. Uh, I'm not sure fully supported one or not. Okay. Um, Imadi Rasan, I had a question on my side. Do you plan? Do you plan? Sorry, to test in the future, or far or near, to test any other uh, GPUs architecture like AMD. Uh, GPU, GPU architecture is a GPU hardware or something. Yeah, yeah, hardware. I mean, so far, so you you are working on NVIDIA uh, GPUs. Do, is there any plan to use AMD GPUs in the future? Yes, I. <laughs> Hope so, uh, but uh, uh, I'm still the beginner of GPU ah. user. So now I'm studying the uh, CUDA or so on. Um, so that uh, well, I, I, have, I have no plan, but I hope so. Okay, and, and Simpa is asking mm -hmm. a second question is how much work was it to get GPU working so great? Yeah, how, how much you spend your time to improve the code? <laughs> uh, uh, how, how, how long? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yeah, but first, uh, so mm -hmm. NDBA Japan kindly supported mm -hmm. the introduction of OpenACC. So this helped dramatically reduce so my work. Uh, but after that, uh, well, <laughs> it took mm. a finite time mm. <laughs> to implement this one. But in my opinion, OpenACC is quite easy to introduce. Uh, on the other hand, now I'm studying the CUDA Fortran, which is very difficult to handle from the viewpoint of memory allocation. So I see Miyato-san raising his hand. Yes. Okay. Ah, Imada san, thank, thank you. Your, your talk. Uh, your code is uh, now successfully accelerated by the uh, uh, GPGPU. So I, I heard that uh, your code is also ported on the uh, NEC uh, vector, vector machine in NIFS. Oh, okay. Is it right? Yes. Yes. Uh, can you comment something? Uh, about the acceleration using the uh, vector ma machine for your code. So, so I, I didn't remember the exact number, but uh, the compared with the uh, JFRS one, mm -hmm. uh, that the NEC vector machine uh, uh, provides us very efficient uh, performance, so that the vector machine is also efficient. Uh, for calculating such a uh, such a code, I think. Uh, but, but sorry, sorry, I'm not sure which component is uh, essential uh, to get the higher performance. So that my comment is just a vector machine shows a very nice performance in my study. So in in, in the vector machine case. Uh... Did you uh, modify your code? Uh, uh, almost no change. Uh, no change, really? Uh, I, I, I changed some uh, the data reading or something, but uh, mm -hmm. almost no change. So you you, you didn't uh, add any some di directive or in your code? Yeah, yes, no, no directive, uh, but just uh, I modified the FFT part, but it's a very trivial change so that almost ah. no change to utilize that machine yeah thank you thank you very much for the exchange do we have any other question for imadera 
I have a uh, one questions. Yeah, uh, related to Miyato San's uh, questions, uh, how you can handle the one D A fifty for vector case? It's a similar situation to GPU. Ah, oh, but but uh, eh, to, eh, to, eh, NEC supercomputer mm. has already installed the F fifty W, mm. so that uh, I can use that install the F fifty W for my calculation. So that's okay. almost no problem. So GPU case, you need to make similar functions on GPU, right? Yeah, QF50 is a similar mm -hmm. function, but the FCC... But, uh, it's, uh, yeah, QF50 just call from the CPU side, right? CPU Not side, GPU. but uh, it, mm -hmm. it can be GPU parallelized. But uh, QF50 is efficient only mm -hmm. for the big uh, mm. uh program yes. size case mm. only so 1d is a very mm. low efficiency nac case is better even 1d better yeah yeah we, we, because the uh, fdw is directly mm. parallelized mm. by vector machine mm. so that uh, okay, this thank you. problem mm. appears only in the gpu calculation Okay, thank you very much for the exchange. Any any other question for Ima Derasan? Okay, so I think that's it. Thank you very much, Ima Derasan, for your talk. And yeah, thank, thank you very much. All of you for the, the discussion we had. Um, so the next talk at the agenda, and, and we are even on time, is Alessandro Di Siena from Max Planck Institute of Plasma Physics in Garching. So Alessandro, normally you should be able to share your screen. And yes, we see. Oh uh, yeah, okay. Perfect. Perfect, yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So good morning, uh, everybody, or good afternoon. So today we'll talk about um, uh, global gyrokinetic uh, simulations of uh, ASDEX upgrade up to the um, transport time scale with Gin Tango. So this will be mainly uh, physics-oriented talk even if all the uh, numerical simulation that I'm going to present have been obtained, uh, mostly on Marconi 100 uh, and a small fraction also on Summit, which is another uh, GPU machine in the, in the US. Oops. Okay, so this is the outlook of my presentation. So I will start with a, a brief introduction. So I will discuss why it is so challenging to bring um, global gyrokinetic simulations up to the uh, transport time scales. So we'll discuss the time scale separation between microscopic physics and macroscopic physics and how we uh, tackle this issue, uh, which in particular we did by coupling the uh, global gyrokinetic uh, code G into a 1D transport solver uh, tango. In this way, uh, these two codes can run on their uh, natural time scales and we can have a significant speed up uh, uh, compared to a single uh, flux driven uh, global gene simulation. Uh, I will talk about the speed up that we achieve thanks to this um, code coupling and also what are the um, uh, speed up uh, that we expect for uh, an iter uh, simulations. Um, and I will also discuss briefly the uh, GPU acceleration that we get uh, um, on um, the GPU machines. Uh, after this introductory part, I will show you some uh, results. So by uh, having this uh, couple of codes, so Gene Tango, we will first, I will first present you with some um, benchmark that we did. So we compared our profile calculation obtained with Gene Tango with the one obtained with uh, Gene Trinity, which is a similar code, but while Gene Tango is uh, fully global, so it takes the full um, volume of the plasma, Gene Trinity is being computed by running only on single uh, location. And then it reconstructs the profile for small uh, number of position, positions. After this uh, benchmark, I will show, I will, um, show you some uh, uh, real, more uh, realistic applications. So for some more realistic, more recent uh, ASDEX discharge, and I will compare the Gene Tango results with TGLF uh, Astra. And I will show you that while TGLF Astra is not able to reproduce the peaking of the ion temperature profile, which is observed in the experiment, we can, uh, uh, we can reproduce this peaking with uh, Gene Tango. I will also talk briefly what is the cause of this uh, peaking that we see in ASDEX, in the ASDEX experiment and in Gintango. 
and in the end some uh, next step that we intend to take with um, with this code so let's start with the first part so the whole goal of this project is to develop uh, uh, self-consistent uh, code which is able to consistently evolve the plasma profiles uh, due to the combined effect of uh, external sources and uh, micro turbulence uh, so we know that in the experiment we have uh, many um, uh, sources so heat and particle sources uh, which can uh, affect the uh, evolution of the plasma profiles so we know that for each sources we build uh, temperature profile and density profiles which typically have um, uh, really hot and dense in the center and then goes to very low temperatures and densities in the in the far edge and this creates steep gradients which can destabilize plasma instabilities uh, so these plasma instabilities can also uh, drive uh, will also drive turbulence and in particular typically outward uh, particle and energy fluxes which will also affect the evolution of the plasma profiles on a different uh, time scale so to self-consistently evolve the plasma profiles including sources and turbulence is extremely challenging and this because there is a very long, uh, very large uh, uh, scale separation between microscopic, so turbulence and macroscopic physics, so evolution of the background profiles. And uh, by doing some uh, uh, simple estimates, we can come up with the ratio between transport and turbulent time scale, which goes as the ratio of one over uh, rho star, where rho star is uh, A, which is the minor radius, and rho, which is the ion larmo radius, and this to the power of two. So this means that if we want to take a, a brute force approach and uh, run uh, only uh, run only with the gerokinetic code, uh, so simulating the very small microscopic physics, but then running to very long time domain, this is something that we can actually do at the moment only for extremely small devices like uh, TCV, where, where this ratio is uh, smaller than 100. But as soon as we go to ASDEX, JET, and uh, ITER, this uh, one over a star increases so much that um, at, at the moment there has been no uh, flux driven simulation for realistic setup for any of these uh, devices, as far as I am aware. So for ITER, this goes as uh, the ratio of 1000. So the, we need to do the, the uh, we need to multiply this by uh, the, um, we need to do the square of this number. So it's extremely large. And it's not only the time domain which we became um, larger and larger as the size of the device increases, but also the resolution requirement will increase and this will make the computational cost of this uh, flux driven simulation uh, um, too large for any current um, um, machine, uh, any current cluster to run these simulations. So, so one possible way around that we come up to uh, overcome this issue is to couple uh, the global gerokinetic code, in this case gene, with the 1D transport solver and in this way we are able to run um, uh, flux driven like simulations even for uh, very large uh, devices with a, a, a very small computational cost. So the coupling is done in the following way. So we uh, start the turbulent simulation, so the gene simulation with some initial guess for the plasma profiles. Gene runs with these initial profiles only for small, uh, very small time domain, non-linearly and we'll come up with an estimate of the uh, heat and particle uh, fluxes for all the species uh, considered. With this uh, estimate of the turbulent fluxes, uh, we can go into Tango. So Tango will evolve the plasma profiles, set consistently retaining the um, estimate of the turbulent fluxes given from Gene, and also the uh, physical shape of the external uh, heating and particle sources. Uh, this will evolve the plasma profiles, the new plasma profiles is given to gene, and this process is repeated over several iterations until the volume average of the source, until the turbulent fluxes of gene matches the volume average of the physical uh, sources. And this is when we reach the, our steady state um, solution. So according to this, um, uh, thanks to this uh, code coupling, we can have a significant uh, speed up. So here on the right figure, you can see the on the y-axis the confinement time for uh, uh, present devices and also the one expected for uh, ether and the confinement time is uh, an estimate also of the length in physical unit of the flux driven simulation that we will need to perform if we want to run uh, uh, gene standalone flux driven simulation to reach uh, steady state 
Uh, if we instead uh, run uh, Gene Tango, we can uh, get the steady state solution uh, with a significant smaller uh, time domain, which you can see here in red. And if we look for ether, so the last point, we can get uh, the steady state solution uh, in principle. So these are estimates um, according to the current um, uh, simulation time that we get in ASDEX. So we can have, uh, in principle, a speed up, a reduction of the time domain of um, two order of magnitude, which is uh, significant and can allow us to run uh, this um, uh, realistic simulation for ether for, um, for the first time. So let me talk briefly about Gene. So Gene is a um, kinetic code, which is working uh, for tokamak accelerators uh, for can be uh, can, can include um, kin an arbitrary number of kinetic species, uh, include electromagnetic uh, fluctuations, and also realistic uh, collisional operators, and can either be run on a single uh, flux surface, so in the local mode, or taking the, the full torus so in the global mode, and can be run either in gradient-driven or flux-driven uh, setups. Uh, we can also handle uh, realistic uh, non-Maxwellian distribution, and this is something which is uh, relevant for this uh, workshop. So it's also been ported on uh, GPU, and we can achieve actually a very large speed up running uh, uh, realistic uh, turbulent simulations for uh, several devices like D3D, ASDEX, uh, and JET. So here I want to show you some um, uh, speed up that we got, for example, for uh, realistic uh, D3D global uh, simulations. And you can find, uh, if you're interested, many more details um, in this uh, publication here. So here on the uh, part which is written right hand side, so this is the right hand side of the Vlasov equation, and you can see the comparison of the time uh, step in seconds between uh, CPU and GPU, and also the, the estimate of the speed up. Uh, there is also the column with the auxiliary fields, which is mainly the computation of the uh, uh, electrostatic and electromagnetic fields, and then other calculation that are needed to self-consistently evolve Vlasov plus the field equation. So in total, we can get a very large speed up, which uh, on a summit from, um, for um, uh, eight nodes, so we have a speed up between CPU and GPU of uh, roughly a factor of 11.6 and goes down for 512 nodes to a factor of six. And this for realistic simulation for uh, uh, D3D. So let me explain briefly Tango. So Tango is a very simple transport code. So it evolved the pressure and um, uh, density equation. So here for simplicity, I'm just writing the pressure. And this is done by considering the physical sources and also the turbulent uh, fluxes. Uh, so this uh, equation is solved uh, uh, over several iterations. So we discretize this equation over the microscopic time step uh, M, which is the physical uh, time step. And then uh, for every single time step, uh, Gene Tango is run over several iteration where the iteration index is L until the uh, volume average of the turbulent flux is matched the uh, volume integral of the, uh, the sources. Uh, so we solve this equation for the steady state solution for the moment. So with all of this uh, introduction in mind, we can go into a more um, uh, application side of this code. So uh, recently, uh, this uh, gene tango coupling has been extended so we can also uh, evolve uh, the magnetic geometry. So gene tango has been coupled to the, the code um, uh, cheese. So for every single tango profiles, we can in principle evolve the magnetic geometry to have uh, consistent geometry still in the turbulent calculation. And we've also coupled these codes to Rabbit, which is a very fast um, code to compute the MBI uh, fast particle distribution function and also temperature, so, so temperature densities and um, the realistic particle and um, heating sources for the MBI. So we can also run fast particle studies now with this, um, with this tool. So the first application that I'm going to show you is this um, benchmark that we did between uh, the uh, global gene tango simulations and the local simulation obtained uh, more than uh, 10 years ago with this uh, local uh, code, so Gene Trinity. So we use the physical uh, heating and particle sources, uh, which you can see here. On the left, the heating sources, and on the right, the particle sources, uh, in blue for the ions and in red for the electrons. And you can also see that we have slightly adjusted the sources at the uh, left uh, gene uh, uh, the radial point, and this is because we, in gene, we enforce uh, the Richelieu boundary conditions, 
and therefore we need to so gene will not have any uh, finite fluxes in the left boundary and so in order to avoid any physical peaking of the gradients in that area we need to artificially modify the sources to account for the buffer regions in gene but this is something which is uh, have only, is only having a very small correction for the integrated sources since the area in that region is extremely small. So if we take the initial uh, profiles and uh, we run uh, the gene global simulation, we can get fluxes which are shown here in red on the left for ions, in the center for electrons and in the right for the particle fluxes. And uh, so you can see that our order of magnitude larger than the power balance, which are the integral of the sources, which are shown here in this red, in these uh, black uh, dots. And only after running Gene Tango for several iterations, we can reach um, a very good uh, agreement with the external uh, sources. If we now we compare the profiles, which is this is what we get. So in blue, there are the Gene Tango global uh, profiles. In red, there are the the points computed with Gene Trinity. So here was run for six uh, locations. And then in black, you can see also the Astra profiles, which were obtained with the very old um, um, setup. So it's um, also the magnetic geometry was MHD unstable. So this is not giving, um, uh, so the fact that we are not matching the Astra profile um, uh, is not really meaningful for this uh, specific um, uh, case. So we can match, however, uh, uh, very good the uh, profiles computed with uh, Gene Trinity. The profile calculation deviates a bit uh, as we go in the, in the core, more and more in the core. And this can be due to the fact that um, in the core, the one over star is uh, reducing and therefore we can have finite size uh, effects which are not um, uh, correctly captured in uh, local, uh, local models. This is also what we see in the gradients, and you can see that in uh, Gene Tango tends to have larger gradients, and this is due to the fact, likely to the fact that um, in flux tube there is an overestimation of the turbulent flux is due to the uh, underestimation of finite size uh, uh, effects. So now after this um, uh, successful uh, benchmark, I can show you some uh, results for the more recent uh, discharge, which is this uh, 31555, where we have a more significant uh, external heating. And um, uh, you can see here the Gene Tango simulation, which can match very well the external uh, sources in all the different turbulent channels. And here, this is an electromagnetic simulation with collisions uh, and with the toroidal uh, uh, ex external rotation, which is taken from the experimental uh, measurements. So if we look at the profiles, we can see that while TGLF Astra, which uh, is shown here by this uh, black uh, line, uh, is uh, strong is uh, under predicting the ion temperature uh, on axis. This is something which we can recover very well up to 0 0.2 in rotoroidal with um, uh, Gene Tango. So we can get very well this um, matching with the experiment. And um, uh, after 0 0.2, more inside, there is the effect of the buffer region, which is also flattening the ion temperature profile. But we are now currently developing um, schemes to overcome this limitation uh, as well. If we look at the electron temperature, we have an excellent agreement between the different models. And the density, we see that um, uh, Gene Tango is uh, um, computing a, a rather flat uh, density, even if it's uh, still uh, uh, almost inside some of these uh, experimental uh, measurements, uh, even if we are not correctly capturing this peaking around 0 0.2. So what is the cause of this uh, peaking of the ion temperature profile that we see in this experiment? So in this experiment, it's quite mild, but there are other cases where this um, underestimation of the TGLF faster profile uh, is uh, significant, even a factor of two or three. So it's important to understand what is the cause of this peaking here. So the first question will be if we can reproduce this uh, peaking of the ion temperature profile in our electrostatic uh, simulations without toroidal rotation. So if we do uh, this kind of simulations and we run Gene Tango for several um, iterations, we see that the electrostatic simulations without rotation cannot capture the experimental measurement, but are also pre uh, predicting more uh, transport than uh, TGLF. And this is why the profiles are uh, more flat compared to TGLF Astra profiles. If we now uh, remove uh, collisions, uh, we see the, the results without collisions in blue and the reference simulation obtained with collisions in cyan. 
And you can see that while the effect of collision is only minor for the temperatures, we have a, a strong effect for the density. And this is also very well consistent with the uh, theoretical and experimental studies done uh, in the past by, for example, Clemente, Angioni, and uh, uh, co-authors. If uh, we, uh, so another question would be if the toroidal rotation is important for this TI peaking, and this was actually um, uh, a possible explanation that has been proposed in the, in the past. If now we run our electrostatic simulation uh, with the toroidal rotation, we have our results in blue and the reference results without rotations in cyan. And you can see that when we retain toroidal rotation, we can match extremely well the uh, TGLF-ASTRA profiles. So this is also an hint that TGLF-ASTRA is basically an electrostatic model, even if it can be run in the retaining electromagnetic uh, fluctuations. However, most importantly, we see that um, we cannot reproduce the TI peaking with the toroidal, uh, the inclusion of the toroidal uh, rotation in our, in our gene simulations. So the other important thing is the electromagnetic uh, fluctuation. So what we see is that as soon as we run our electromagnetic uh, fluctuations, what we see is that we can uh, indeed recover the TI peaking. So we see the peaking of the gradients around 0 0.2. And uh, this is actually something which was also studied um, um, quite significantly in the past. And the electromagnetic effects are expected to become more and more important as we increase either the external heating or um, we play with the magnetic field to increase the, the plasma uh, beta. As we include electromagnetic fluctuations here for this case, we see also that there is a corresponding flattening on the density. And again, this is something which is very well consistent with the uh, theoretical uh, predictions. Um, so if we look at the stability analysis with our uh, steady state uh, gene tango profile, what we see is that uh, on the left, you can see the growth rates. So on the y-axis, there is the beta uh, evaluated at mid radius. Uh, and then there is the, the x-axis, which is the toroidal mode number. And in the horizontal line, you can see the nominal beta for the steady state profile. And on the right, you can see the corresponding frequency analysis. So when we look at these profiles, we, uh, with these, uh, these results, we can see that the uh, steady state solution uh, sits in a condition, in a parameter space where this um, high frequency mode is uh, linearly stable. However, we are very close to the linear stability with the uh, threshold to linearly destabilize this uh, electromagnetic mode, which is likely to be a uh, KBM. So what we can say is that um, submarginal uh, electromagnetic mode might play a very important role in the peaking of the uh, temperature profiles. And this is actually something which could be very relevant also for uh, reactor uh, in the future, since we, we will have may, um, maybe a large fraction of electromagnetic modes, which could be driven by uh, fast particles, for example. So something which could be interesting here, so we can compare the speed up. So uh, all of these simulations have been run, as I mentioned previously, on uh, GPU. So uh, most of these on uh, Marconi 100 and a small fraction. So the, only the one on, for, the, for the benchmark on, uh, on Summit. And uh, for all of this uh, machine, for all of these simulation, we got um, a very large speed up running on GPU. So here I'm comparing not the speed up that we get on GPU, but the speed up that we get comparing our uh, gene tango simulated uh, physical time compared to the confinement time, which is roughly going from a factor of four to a factor of five. And on top of this, we have an additional speed up of roughly a factor of eight uh, since we are running on, uh, on a GPU machine. So in total, we have a significant speed up, which is roughly um, yeah, uh, five multiplied by a factor of eight for these uh, different um, uh, uh, type of simulations uh, compared to a single uh, gene uh, flux driven simulation on a CPU device. So just a few um, words on the next step that we intend to take. So since we know, as I mentioned previously, there are cases where TGLF-ASTRA is not able to reproduce the experimental measurement and in particular, when we have strong electromagnetic effects and fast particles. And as you can see here on the left for an ASDEX discharge, you see in blue and red, the uh, TGLF profiles evaluated with or without Tecros B rotation. 
and you can see that they, they are strongly, uh, they are very flat and they are not reproducing the very peaked ion temperature profile, which is measured in the experiment. And you can also see the analysis of the gradients and the conductivity in the middle and right um, figures. So here it's very important to uh, apply gene tango for these cases, since we are very confident that we will be able to, uh, to capture this, uh, this peaking uh, for the temperature profiles. Uh, and then uh, uh, we can uh, uh, we will have um, uh, uh, some confidence to apply this tool also for uh, reactor relevant uh, physics like ITER, see where there will be uh, likely uh, uh, significant um, electromagnetic activity by fast particles or alpha particles. So we intend to uh, study, for example, the fast particle effects on plasma confinement by addressing the complex feedback loop which exists between energetic particles and microturbulence and study what is their impact on plasma profiles and then also what are the repercussions on the eating and uh, particle um, um, uh, uh, deposition profiles. This is important also to the understanding of formation of transport barrier. And ultimately, um, we will in we intend to, to study alpha particle effects at jet DT first and then uh, in ITER. And all of these studies have been uh, possible or, or will be possible thanks for the um, GPU machines uh, that we can currently use on uh, Marconi 100. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alessandro. Um, so I don't see any question in the chat, but people, if you have a question for Alessandro, please go ahead. Okay, so could, could you, that's kind of the same question to Ima de Hassan. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any perspective on, on trying AMD GPU, Intel GPU, is there, is there something you have in mind for that? Yeah, this is something that we are currently working on at the moment. Um, so in the, in the US, um, uh, which is, um, I mean, the, the, the uh, GPU porting of Gene has been done uh, in, uh, at IPP, uh, GARKing in collaboration with the US. And this is a project which is currently ongoing to, to port, um, to, to be able to run also on different um, uh, type of GPUs. And, so and we are currently uh, working on this and um, we are already running on few other devices with uh, AMD. And um, we are working on um, improving the speed up also on those different um, GPUs. And, and may I ask uh, what, what laboratory on, on US? Uh, so this is, um, um, so Gene is part of um, uh, DOE funded project uh, oh. for developing uh, a full device modeling uh, uh, code by coupling Gene to XGC. And uh, our, uh, within that project, uh, there has been um, significant effort in uh, porting Gene on GPU since um, the, for successfully uh, complete that project, uh, we will need to run uh, a neater simulation uh, from the core to the up to the pedestal uh, on GPU. This is something that we are. So that, yeah, that's so so. From my understanding, there's a lot of people involved in them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and and last question for me, and then I see that Yagisan has raised his hand. Um, do you expect um, large differences in the performance on on several GPU? Like, do you foresee a big difference between the NVIDIA and AMD or AMD and, and Intel in terms of performance? Uh, these are don't really, <laughs> I'm not really an expert on this, but uh, as far as I know, uh, at the moment, there are some differences in the performances, uh -huh. uh, but this requires some um, different uh, write-up of parts of the code in a different way. So this is something which is, um, I think can be can be improved very, I mean, <laughs> Not very, but can be improved with yeah. some work. Well, that's always the game of portability and efficiency. You can't mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah. <laughs> but sometimes <laughs> the gap is more or less uh, impressive, let's say. Uh, thank you very much. Thank so, you. Yagi-san, do you want to please go ahead? OK, uh, I have a couple of questions. Uh, first of all, could you explain the essential difference between Gene Tango and the Gene Trinity? Yeah, so Gene Trinity is essentially a flux tube model. 
So what that means is that we uh, select, uh, for example, uh, uh, six locations uh, and Gene Trinity uh, and Gene runs uh, for um, each given uh, temperature ingredients at a specific location. Mm -hmm. So the profiles is after all reconstructed by uh, building up the profiles with these different uh, locations. So this is uh, in this can be in principle be used and uh, has been used, for example, in 2010. But after 2010, there has been, as far as I know, no other publications with Gene Trinity or other codes with Trinity. And the thing because the local model is more um, difficult to run and can go into more, um, uh, can, can build profiles which are, uh, after all, uh, leading to some uh, unstable uh, turbulent simulations in flux tubes. In global, this problem is um, somehow not happening because we have um, a full consistent global profiles, which does not allow jumps uh, in gradients and temperatures. So this is something that which is essentially not an issue for this global coupling between Gene and Tango. On top of this, uh, there are all, I mean, most of the uh, next steps that we intend to take involve uh, fast particle physics and uh, alpha particles for, uh, for ITER. And uh, we know that uh, alpha particles have uh, extremely large um, large more radii, and therefore they will be hardly confined on a single uh, flux surface. Um, also, they will drive um, likely electromagnetic modes, which are very broad. I mean, they are very broad mode structures. And therefore, for correctly modeling uh, these effects, uh, we need uh, a global turbulence code. So local code will only will not be able to capture the the broad mode structure of these alphanic modes and also the zone, the global structure of the zonal flow driven by these modes. So this and, is uh, okay. Global. And how you can handle the boundary condition for gene tank case? Is it uh, the completely same as uh, transport side? Because uh, for a global code like uh, GKNet, uh, Imazera san explained, in that case, maybe they have a source in the central region, the sink in H region, and the source mm -hmm. free region. They make a source free region to global turbulence simulations. Yeah, How in, your case? In this case, is, mm -hmm. um, so Tango has mm -hmm. the full uh, realistic uh, profile for the mm -hmm. heating and particle sources. Mm -hmm. Uh, within every gene simulation, gene is running gradient-driven mode. Mm. So this means that the uh, we we take a profile from Tango and then mm. uh, we apply some crook uh, operators to mm. to keep that profile fixed within the gene uh, iteration. And this, I think, is pretty much what you mentioned. So we apply some uh, this crook operator have, um, mm. sources and things to keep the profile uh, on average steady on that given mm. initial profile. Uh, however, the amplitude of these crook operators to keep the profiles fixed uh, uh, when we go when we reach the steady state solution uh, is extremely small. So the, um, the we, we don't need to apply a very large crook uh, to maintain the profile fixed at steady state. So it's um, but then we keep the full uh, realistic uh, eating and particle sources in Tango. Okay, thank you. And the other question is you show some eat up predictions uh, yep. using gene tango case mm -hmm. and uh, is this a uh, l mode or h mode so the this prediction is... that we did here this mm -hmm. is the standard um, uh, eater um, uh, scenario that is um, expected so this is the operational scenario for uh, for eater mm. oh, i don't find so, that. Uh, standard H mode case. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But in that case, maybe yeah. uh, mm -hmm. which region you solve? Uh, because they have a pedestal, right? Yeah, this so in this scenario. region, we, yeah, that's a good point. In the, for these simulations, so we are uh, excluding the pedestal. So we are running gene from the core up to 0 0.8 or 0 0.9 or 0 0.7 in rotoroidal. So for computing the pedestal, uh, we can uh, we can use um, other codes. So the, the idea will be to mm -hmm. to then compute the pedestal uh, uh, with um, either 
uh, a gerokinetic code, which could be uh, gene X or uh, XGC or other codes, mm. or uh, with um, a more simple, um, uh, more simple codes. Mm. So these okay. are estimates mm. um, mm. computing the plasma profiles with a fixed boundary at mm. zero eight, and then computing mm. the whole profile up to the core. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay. and uh, one more question. Uh, you show you just compare the experimental data to gene tango result or other TGRF case, and uh, I saw the TI is peaking case, mm -hmm. and in that case, TGRF is uh, better than gene tango predictions. Is it? You mean? Um... Uh, it, to... So when we when we take oh, okay. so this, uh, yeah, this the so the no, no, pasta no, profile no. is the uh, is the black one. Uh, other other prior maybe this is only you. So this will be with the full uh, with the okay full okay. In tango. Uh, the, so the tigella pasta profile is always keep. Um, I mean here is a reference profile, so we we are not changing. Uh, okay, uh, for uh, for example, this case. Mm -hmm. Yeah, density is a little bit too, uh, not so good prediction, right? Yeah. Yeah, in yes. this case. Yes. But, uh, and the red one, red line is, uh, just, so in that case, every model is failed to predict the yep. TI peaking. Yes. In this case, uh, it's because uh -huh. in this simulation, we are not including electromagnetic uh, fluctuations. Uh, Mm. And therefore, the there is no uh, stabilization of um, ITG turbulence in the core. As soon as we include electromagnetic effects, uh, mm -hmm. then you can see that we are um, recovering the the ion temperature peaking at the expense of uh, flattening of the density, mm -hmm. which is still within the experimental errors. And you sh you say uh, like a zero point one uh, case, uh, mm -hmm. you need to fast ion effect. It could either be that we need fast ion effects. Uh -huh. So this is a region where the, the MBI deposition is actually uh -huh. uh, peaking. So we expect that we can have some fast particle effects in, the, in that region. But that is also the region where we are, uh, when we have the gene buffer, so this um, uh, gray box. Uh, so this is the region where we are artificially um, killing fluctu the fluctuations in gene. So this is also why the profile is flat, because the um, uh, we are not computing the effect of sources and um, turbulence in that region. So it could either be the, the 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 buffer, the effect of the buffer, or the effect of fast particles, or a combination. It could also be. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for the the exchange and the discussion. Do we have any other question for Alessandro? Okay, I think no. Thank you very much, Alessandro, and, thank, and you. thank you very much for all this discussion and exchange that really helped us. Um, so next point in the agenda is the one you all prefer, right? <laughs> the virtual group photo. So if you don't mind, uh, I would like you to open your camera, please, so I can take a screenshot. Um, if I do this, that's a bit better. Okay, a few more minutes, the time that everyone is on. And okay, smile. And I'm done, just the time I register. Thank you very much. Recorded. Um, so you can stay on or off as you want. <laughs> Always follow up. So the next talk is uh, Okita san from University of Tokyo. Yes. Uh, can you see the, uh, see the it's my just, slide? It's just not in, in full screen mode yet. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Okay. So good morning, European colleagues, and good afternoon, Japanese colleagues. May I start? Sure. <laughs> sure. 
My name is Taira Uchita. I'm from the University of Tokyo. First of all, I'd like to acknowledge my co-authors, Mr. Yamamoto, Mr. Furuta, who are the master course student and undergraduate student of my laboratory, and Dr. Watanabe in QST. In this presentation, I focus on the behavior of the helium bubbles in iron. Helium bubbles, namely aggregation vacancies and helium atoms generated through N alpha nuclear reactions, is a characteristic microstructure of fusion materials. In order to assure the integrity of fusion materials, it is necessary to precisely understand behavior of the helium bubbles and construct a model that describes the evolution of helium bubbles microstructures based on the understandings. However, conventional simplified models have investigated the evolution of the helium bubbles by incorporating only the migration of helium atoms and vacancies, not incorporating the migration of the helium bubbles themselves. These are the TEM in situ TEM micro observations of helium bubbles. We can see that helium bubbles uh, diffuse randomly like this way. But when the distance between bubbles become less than a certain level, they start, uh, uh, they start to approach each other. They come into contact and coalesce. Since migration of the hair bubbles has a great influence on the evolution of the microstructure and resultant changes in the mechanical properties, it is necessary to elucidate the mechanism and construct a model that incorporates the, these processes in detail. Among these processes, the behaviors written in red have been treated by molecular dynamics simulations so far. This slide shows one typical example of the MD simulations of the dynamic behavior in that of bubbles. Initially, two bubbles were put apart. However, when we can see that through the attractive interactions, a contact can occur even on the order of the nanosecond when the distance between bubbles is short. Mm. Uh, it is true that the MD simulation is a powerful tool to evaluate behaviors on the atomistic scale, such as bubble contact. However, there is a limitation. Since MD simulation can accurately, accurately treat atomistic vibration that occurs on the order of in the period of 10 to minus 13 seconds. The time set is normally set to the order of 10 to minus 15 seconds. Hence, there is a limit to the time scale that can be reproduced by the MD simulations. A waiting time for a phenomena to occur can be described by these equations by inserting a value of the 0.6 EV, which is a migration energy of a vacancy in iron. The temperature dependence of the waiting time for the vacancy to diffuse once can be described by this plot. It demonstrates that, that multiple diffusions of vacancy cannot be reproduced by MD simulations. Therefore, it is practically difficult to construct a model of the evolution of the bubble microstructure by MD simulations alone. This graph shows the necessity of the multi-state simulations for reactor structure materials. Changes in the properties of structure materials under irradiations are the multi-scale multi uh, phenomena in terms of both times and length scale. It is indispensable to complementarily utilize the experiments and the simulations 
in order to elucidate the phenomenon. And also it is important to develop a prediction model based on the understandings of the obtained mechanisms. In particular, in order to construct a model of the evolution of the bubble microstructure, it is necessary to expand the time scale while maintaining the similar accuracy as the MD simulations. One possible method might be a kinetic Monte Carlo, which will shorten as a TMC. This method can expand the time scale based on the state to state dynamics. In normal KMC simulations, events that can occur in each time, each time step are summarized in a list, weighted based on the activation energies and then selected stochastically. KMC simulation, KMC simulations might be useful in some cases, but the disadvantage is that it is difficult to predict unpredictable, no, it is difficult to treat unpredictable events because it is necessary to list all possible processes in advance. Based on this concern, the objective of this study is to develop a computational method that can expand the time scale of the MD simulations while maintaining atomistic fidelity of our systems that incorporates helium bubbles. We will reproduce a coalescence processes with dynamic behavior of helium bubbles, which is diffusion of the bubble themselves using the constructive method. For these purposes, we use a, a method called on the fly KMC. It is a method that searches for the activation processes at each time step of the calculations, which is a reason why it is called on the fly. It can treat complex, complicated behaviors without preparing an event list in advance. In this study, we use the CKMC, one of the CKMC, one of the on the fly KMC method. In the CKMC method, the subtle point search, subtle point search, which occupied more than 9%, 19% of the computational cost, is significantly speeded up by limiting the area called active volume. But there are challenges for TMC, namely flick event. Let's say we have three events in the list. The difference in the activation energy between the first two are too small to be detected experimentally. And the third event has a typical activation energy value of around 1.0 EV, which is frequently observed in materials. Since the frequency of occurrence of this event is weighted exponentially, the difference in the frequency at 300 Kelvin between the first two doubles. Furthermore, the frequency of the third event is almost equal to zero. So if, even if the, uh, the, uh, the event three is a key dynamics, of the microstructure evolution, it is hardly uh, represented uh, uh, by being disturbed by this event. They are, uh, these are the called freak event. This is animation. Uh, this animation is a uh, uh, CKMC calculation for contact with two, two bubbles in iron. See here. Yes, it, ta it takes many steps to move back and forth between small dent near the energy minimum. That is the, by a trivial vibration of the helium atoms. And it takes time for the phenomena of interest to occur. 
Uh, it is a common issue for the KMC not to only focus on the, uh, on the fly KMC. However, since more than 90% of the computational cost of the, for the, uh, of the KM, on the fly KMC is used for the subtle point searches, thus, when flick events are continuously selected, the mess time scale beyond the MD cannot be achieved. Especially in a system containing light elements such as helium atoms, the reactivation energy of the their trivial event, the trivial vibrations are very low, and it is difficult to avoid these freak events. So, in order to elucidate the dynamic behavior of the helium bubbles using the on the fly KMC. We have developed a calculation scheme that select transition destination candidates for saddle point searches using the uh, iron system, only the iron systems, and incorporate the influence of helium, amatan, atom, helium atoms only during the, during the uh, energy calculations and relaxations. Considering that the migration energy of a vacancy in iron is approximately 0.6 EV, event uh, with activation energy of 0.6 or lower are set so that they are not selected as freak events. This, size, uh, this shows a uh, helium bubble uh, coalescence process calculated by the developed method. So using the MD result as an input value, uh, it is possible to reproduce the coalescence process in which I'm sorry, two bubbles, two bubbles uh, becomes elliptic and consequently spherical through the multiple diffusions of vacancies. Oh, sorry. So becomes elliptic and finally become, becoming a spherical through the multiple diffusion of the vacancies. And it was evaluated for the first time in the world. These are the snapshot of the coalescence processes we succeeded in reproducing the time evolution up to the order of 10, 10 microseconds, which is a time scale of 10 to five to 10 to times, 10 to six times longer than that of the normal MD simulations, while maintaining the atomistic fidelity. <clears throat> it was also possible <clears throat> to reproduce the process in which multiple diffusions of vacancies occurred so as to reduce the surface area of the bubble and then uh, in the contact part were eliminated. And the shape approaches elliptic and spherical. By using the method that excludes helium atoms only for the selection of the transition destination candidate or saddle point searches, it was also clarified that the existence of the helium atoms enhances vacancy diffusions by increasing the internal pressure of the bubbles. In other words, the method developed in this study is extremely powerful in reproducing its behavior of helium bubbles. Let me conclude our presentations. We analyzed the coalescence process of the helium bubbles through their dynamic behavior while maintaining atomistic fidelity. We have developed a calculation scheme in the on the fly KMC that select transition destination candidates for subtle point search using the, only the iron system and incorporate the influence of helium atoms only during the energy calculations and relaxations. It enabled reproducing the time progress up to a time scale that is 10 to five to 10 to six times longer.
and that of the conventional MD simulations. And this method is extremely powerful in reproducing the behavior of the helium bubbles. And I think it, it is a probably the only method that can reproduce the phenomena of the mesotime scale while maintaining the atomistic fidelities. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Okita-san, for your talk. I would like to know if we have any questions uh, within the participants. I uh, see you and raise, yeah, Yagi-san, please. Uh, Okita-san, thank you for your talk. I'm j just to ask you how uh, you can use a GPU machine when you are cold. Uh, honestly speaking, most of the calculation has been conducted in the QSD mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. calculation, but mm -hmm. it can extend the GPU uh, calculation quite easily, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, so your code is already tuned on Marconi 100? Uh, not yet. Okay. Mm. But uh, maybe you also use the MD simulation, right? to combine this yes. on the fly. And the uh, yes. MD part is already tuned by GPU? Yes, yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so your strategy is uh, once you use a GPU machine, uh, uh, this MD simulations, mm -hmm. then using this result, you run this uh, on the fly KMC. Yes. Is, that, is it right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, uh, MD mm. is used as an input mm. value. I see. Mm -hmm. And uh, how, how much uh, time you need to this to produce uh, input, you know, the files, for example? Mm. Normally it takes one to two days. Oh, really? So long for, mm. yes. Oh. Uh, depending then, on the size. I see. And uh, how how much you need to on on the fly KMC after that? Oh, for that it's, uh, mm. dep it also depends mm. on the uh, oh. case and how many repeated calculations are necessary. Mm. But normally, mm. yagi -san, can you see the file? Yes. Mm. This is a, a con calculation condition. 16 nodes, 36 cores. So, uh, this is JFR S1 case for yes. uh, six, mm, 36 cores. Yes. 36 cores. I see. Mm. With okay. these conditions, mm. it can mm. uh, accelerate 10 to 6 mm. times uh, I see. longer. Mm. I see. Mm. Okay. So maybe input file is usually larger, uh, take a larger time. Mm, yes, or, oh, depending sometimes. on the size, but uh, it's normally mm. MD takes longer. Mm. Oh, okay. Thank you, yuki -san. And, and thank you, okita -san. I see a question mm -hmm. from Pavel Vladimirov. Hello, thank you very much for the very interesting uh, talk. I'm Pavel Vladimir from Karlsruhe Institute of Technology. So my question is, uh, you mentioning the procedure of uh, automatic selection of the uh, next candidate for the saddle point search, which is not incorporating helium, but uh, just is based on the uh, positions of the iron atoms. <laughs> and uh, how, how you do this, how it is uh, realized, and uh, if you are including somehow the effect of helium atoms uh, as a pressure inside the bubble, or it's completely ignored on this. Uh, we incorporate the effect of the internal pressure mm -hmm. due to the existence of the hairy, mm -hmm. then calculate the, uh, the uh, act, uh, what should I say, sorry. Uh, candidate only for the iron migrations. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense? So the transition candidate, 
a destination candidate only uh, is chosen only for the iron cases, whereas the energy or relaxation as conducted by incorporating the effect of the existence of the helium atoms. Mm -hmm. Okay, and during the calculation of the saddle point, you are also taking into account helium, or you are ignoring helium at this. Oh, point. we incorporate, of course, incorporate the effect of helium. Okay, of the saddle point searches. But only for the iron can be mobile, but effect of the helium. Uh, on the mobility of the iron atom is incorporated. Does okay, it make sense for you? I see, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pavel. I have a question for you, Kita-san. That was for mm -hmm. uh, Yagi-san a question for your compute of 24 hours. Do you have any mm -hmm. checkpoint restart methods? Because I mean, 24 hours, if something is failing, it would be nice not to lost everything. So do, is it something you have set up or is it something you are um, chasing, interested in? Uh, I'm sorry, I cannot completely fully understand the question. Maybe, so your question is that, so I check during the 24 hours calculation or not. Is it make sense, does it make sense? So, so my, my question was, uh, during your 24 hours calculation, if at some point you have a node failing, a hardware failure, do you have any possibility to uh, retrieve partial information and rerun where, it, where your code stopped? Or do you have to rerun from the start? Maybe Okita-san, I think... I She's asking for like a bus case. Uh, if you cut the 24 hours, restart mm -hmm. is some problems for bus ah. case. But uh, in your code, if you just 24, more than 24 hours, if you need to, to get the uh, steady state solutions, uh, relaxations, mm -hmm. how you can handle this, your code? No problem, like a bus. No problem, no problem. No, no, really no problem. I'm sorry, I cannot understand mm. the questions. Mm. That's okay. Thank you, Yegis. Mm. <laughs> uh, do we have any other question for Okita-san? So I guess that concludes uh, that concludes the technical talks. Thank you very much, Okita-san, and thank you all for the, the discussion. Thank you all the speakers um, really appreciated your talk and discussion we took. Uh, so the next point in the agenda would be the conclusion and close and the floor is to Yagi-san. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so I just share which one. Okay, just wait. Can you see my screen? No yeah, problem? Absolutely. Okay, so, okay. So this is uh, Imadera san's summary of Imadera san's talk. And uh, he has implemented his code uh, on Marconi 100. And uh, summary uh, by introducing field aligned coordinate, the grid number is reduced by one eighth and uh, resultant calculation time it also becomes one eighth. So this, you know, field aligned coordinate is, has a, a give a advantage to speed up his global code. And also using open ACC directives, the calculation speed to time integrate the distribution function is accelerated by 48 times. <laughs> Uh, uh, and by utilizing the machine learning, we found he found the tavern heat transport kernel with a finite time delay shows a relatively longer correlations, which means uh, it's uh, more like a non-local transport. 
And the, here is a, just comparison between the uh, CPU, uh, GPU case and uh, 16 GPU case and uh, 64 GPU case. So this is uh, his uh, summaries. Okay. And the uh, next one is, uh, okay. Just wait a minute. Can you see? Yes. Okay. So uh, this summary is just uh, the uh, PDF file. And maybe this, you know, the Gene Tango, just the uh, global uh, code and combined, combined with uh, transport code. And uh, he just uh, analyzed uh, Aztec upgrade experimental data. And uh, for example, plasma discharge show a large peaking of ion temperature profile, which is not captured by TGL Astra simulation so far. And uh, this is a non limitation of present available reduced tolerance code has been shown to strong under predict electromagnetic and super thermal particle effects on tolerance. And uh, these effects are typically found to reduce tolerance tra transport in gyrokinetic simulations consistently with the experimental signatures observed in different tokamak devices. And he demonstrated the gene tango can indeed recover the experimental measurement, correctly capturing ion temperature peaking up to Roy's 0.2 case. He already explained that 0.1, it's uh, just buffer area or pass ion physics is important. And the correct description of deep core region is likely to require extension of gene tango, including super summer particle physics. Okay, to access the impact of beta stabilizations, MHG mode collisions, and toroidal rotations on the evolution of plasma profile and TI pigging in the experiment, he performed the gene tango simulation, retained different uh, physical effects in gene runs. And he demonstrated the peaking of ion temperature profiles due to electromagnetic effects while keeping MHD activity stable but grow to margin marginalities. So this is his uh, result summaries. Okay, and finally, uh, Okita-san's. Can you see? Okay. So this is uh, Okita-san's summary. Simulation for dynamic behavior of uh, helium bubbles on the fry kinetic Monte Carlo. Uh, uh, yagi -san, I think it's not the Okay, okay. You just want to try to uh, again. Okay. Uh, how how this? I don't. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's okay. 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 So the, uh, in his simulation on the fry kinetic Monte Carlo method, he explained the, how he found uh, this, you know, the managed to find uh, subtle points. And uh, uh, it is a method to enable to uh, treat complicated uh, behavior by introducing an algorithm that searches for activation processes at each time step of calculations. Uh, he say CKMC method, which is used in this study, subtle point search is signif significantly speed up by lim limiting the areas. Uh, 
And using MD result as input form information, it is possible to reproduce the coalescence process in which two vowels become the ellipsoid and consequently a sphere through multiple diffusion of vacancy and uh, for the first time. And he successfully in reproducing time evolution bubble coalescence up to the order of 10 microsecond, which is a uh, time scale of 10 to the fifth, 10 to the power of fifth to power of six times longer than normal MD simulations while maintaining atomistic fidelities. So this is his summaries. Okay, I think that's all. Okay, thank you very much. That's all. Thank you very much, Egisan. So this concludes uh, this workshop that we had today. I would like to thank everyone, all the speakers and all the attendants uh, for coming. We really appreciate that. The video will be uh, available soon on our Robofusion YouTube channel and you will receive the usual mail for the, the video release. So I will stop recording.